Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Golden Goal Show, Season 3, Episode 12. Welcome on this beautiful day after some lovely Champions League football. It was amazing. It was it was hurtful. It hurt a lot of people's feelings, especially if you're a Spurs supporter, then uh, I will cry with you. I will <sighs> cry with you. It's, it is what it is. It is what it is. How it goes. Welcome watching on YouTube and Spotify. Let me first introduce you to a guest on the show, Peter. How are you doing? An Arsenal supporter. It, it, it may have not been Champions League day for you, but it was a good day because first place. Yep. First place on the league, first place in the Europa League table. Yeah. Guaranteed was... to go through, so now we can rest all of our players for that. There we go. That's what I love to hear. And also, another guest on the show, Veronica, a Spurs supporter. Maybe a little iffy after today. How are you doing? Today? <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> I'm, you know, I've been better. That's I've definitely the... been better on other times I've been on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I understand your pain. I just watched the Tottenham game. Ooh, we'll get into that. But everybody, welcome watching the show. Let us get into first the Premier League. And yes, the games happened. Match day 13. First place is Arsenal sitting there for the past mm, two months, three months. Good for them. I mean, happy, happy for them. Second place, Manchester City. Third place, Tottenham. Fourth place, Newcastle, Money United. Fifth place, Chelsea FC. And then 20th place is Nottingham Forest. Aye, aye, aye. All right, match day 13. Let's get into it. Nottingham Forest, Liverpool, one to nil for Forest. I am. Oh, I'm buzzing. I'm happy. Everton, I mean, that. Uh, yeah, Nottingham Forest, Liverpool 1-0. I am not biased here. Everton and Crystal Palace, 3-0 for Everton. Manchester City and Brighton, 3-1 for Manchester City. Holland, no expectations. Chelsea, Manchester United, a great game here. Ah, what am I saying? That was a disgusting, boring league game. 1-1 one one there. Wolves and Leicester City, 0-4 for Leicester City, finally getting the form back. Austin Villa and Brentford, 4 to nil for Austin Villa. Ay, 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 battering Brentford. Southampton and Arsenal, one all there, one to one. And then Le- Leeds United and Fulham, three to two for Mitrovic and Fulham. Tonham and Newcastle, two to one for Newcastle. Yikes. And then West Ham United and Bournemouth, two to nil for the Hammers. Go West Ham. All right. Um, I can, oh, I'll just talk about this first game first. Chelsea, Manchester United. I was a boring game. Manchester United could have put this game to bed a little earlier on, honestly, with, uh, what's the fidget spinner's name? Uh, I forget his name every time. Uh, who's the guy that they got? Anthony. There we go. <laughs> the fidget spinner? Yeah, that's what I call him. He does he spins. <laughs> I mean, it worked yeah, in the game. Yeah, he totally does. He, that's he got funny. a man. Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he could have got some chances as well, too. Rashford could have scored as well, but of course, Kepa doing great as well with his form the past couple weeks. And Chelsea, they did score with a penalty on... Mm, that's a good question. But then Jorginho scored the penalty, and it was madness. And then Manchester United and the little bits of the end of the game. Who else but... Who who else? I don't even know who's actually scored to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> for united yeah it was casemiro oh the header yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah. and i felt bad for keppa on that uh, one that was that was tough full line. yeah if if the thing is if he, that was mendy i would think he maybe would have saved that or that's what i said longer arms yeah 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 but then again mendy does have a habit of sticking to his place sometimes but I don't know. If he went for that, yeah, he could have saved that, but I'm not... Kepa, he, nice try. He is one of the smaller keepers, but... Do they switch him out a lot? No, they, no. he's been playing for the past, I think, month or month or so since oh, Mendy so got is, injured. Is he, oh, he's injured? Okay. okay. And he, he went, I think, uh, I think it was like 120 minutes. No, no, no. It was like 400 minutes or something without a goal on him. He, he's been doing absolutely phenomenal. So, so unlucky yeah. then. Yeah, and then he got scored on as well, too, yesterday in Champions League, but it is what it is. All right, All right. so Arsenal, Southampton, Peter, did you happen to watch this game? I don't know if this yeah. might be a disappointing result. I'm just, I'm, I don't know. Um, disappointing, but not heartbreaking. Hmm. Um, obviously, Southampton's not a team you want to uh, be losing points to. That was That's always been Arsenal saying the last few years is, is not beating the teams that you should be beating, but um, I don't think it was 
obviously it wasn't the best performance, but I don't think it was the worst. I think it really just came down to we just weren't able to finish most of our chances. Um, the Xhaka goal, pretty standard coming in from the outside, uh, crossing it in, and boom, tap it in. Nice. But um, Gabrielle had a chance, uh, kind of like a half volley uh, towards the end of the half, but it went straight to um, their goalkeeper. But I think at the end of the day, it was just they got their goal from just us lacking on defense a bit. And then I, we just couldn't finish our chances. It looked like an evenish game because I'm just looking at the stats right now. 10 shots to 12 shots for Arsenal. Three shots on target to three shots. Possession 60% for Arsenal, 40% for Southampton. Yeah, yeah. they definitely had a better... Um, we started off really well, then they came in, then we ended really well. And the second half was kind of 50-50. Yeah, but fair enough for Arsenal. I mean, they've been on a hot streak right now and good for them at least they yeah no I'll, I'll definitely take the draw yeah. i will take the draw um still i mean obviously other results like the liverpool man city dropping points not this week but a couple back and then mm -hmm. so it definitely helps and again really we're, we're, the only way we're gonna win this league is if we don't have games like this where we drop points to teams that we should lose that we, yeah. that we should that we should beat I was going to ask this, does Arsenal have good squad depth? I never really had the chance to look at the squad depth really for them. Um, I would say they they have enough right now, but if a player like Jesus goes out, obviously that's a big loss and yep. we don't really have a big name for that. And Kedia is not bad, but he's not obviously not the quality that Jesus is. Yeah. But, I, I, think I think the think... real miss is in the midfield. Like if you yeah. lose Odegaard, like Vieira's – Oh, he looks good against certain teams, but he I thought he looked really bad against Southampton when he came in. Yeah, well, yeah, I just think he didn't get into it. Um, he's been good in the Europa League against those teams. Obviously, the quality is a little less, but it's it's, it's still all right. And and he's young and he's new team, right? Yeah. So I don't play him too much. But yeah, but, uh, yeah, I think that's that's like the point. Like where he definitely has the potential. I think he looks like a great young player but like if Odegaard were to get injured I think the creativity would struggle a little bit in league games yeah. but luckily he's not going to the World Cup so <laughs> uh, Norway's not going oh, so Odegaard's yeah. not yeah. going to be there it's a little sad. Yeah. but um yeah definitely midfield I, I, honestly the last few games Gabriel the, the defender Gabriel has been doing my head in a bit He's he's gotten quite lucky that we've been able to pull out some games after some of his mistakes but yeah. Um, but midfield is definitely. I, I don't know. I saw something about Milinkovic Savage, and I would I would welcome that. But um, and then no, and at the deadline they were trying to get Douglas Costa from Villa, but that didn't go through. So yeah. we'll see what they can do in January. But I think if we were to get more depth, it would definitely be at the midfield position, and then maybe think about another defender, center back. Yeah. Um. Arsenal they have three Gabriels. Is that right? Gabriel yes. Marcelina Gabriel. And then and they're all Brazilian. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Yeah. That's, okay. Well, yep. Yeah, Arsenal good on for them. Um, all right, Veronica, lay it down. What happened? Newcastle taught him. I watched a bit of this game. So <sighs> So it was pretty interesting because at the beginning of the game, Spurs had like full control, which I wasn't really expecting. Yeah. And we looked good. Sun had like five shots or something at one point. Like, you know, we were we were like you know, moving the ball well, quickly taking shots, you know, trying to do something. And then uh, Larice just did, like, what he does. He's genuinely, I think, I, I love him, but I think he might be the worst keeper in the Premier League at coming off his line. No, coming off his line. <laughs> okay. Coming off his line. Like, he he's great sh shot stopper. His distribution is, like, okay. But, like, ball at his feet and coming off the line – he's just made some like really wild choices and Damn. that's a that's a that's a world cup winner right there you know it doesn't matter like he he's a great goalkeeper but you you can have you know you don't you can be great without having every part of your game be yeah. fantastic and i think he i think not to, one problem with spurs which this game highlighted really well is I thought coming into the season, we had like a good squad depth, depth. And now I kind of realized that the system only works with like certain players in it 
and playing well. Yeah. And I think the two that you can really tell matter a lot mm. are Christian Romero and Dan Kulosevsky. Yep. And yeah. Christian Romero, when he's not there, you can see that Dyer and Larice both feel like they need to compensate because Romero's the only one who really can pass out of the back and be with the ball at his feet comfortably. So throughout the entire game, Eric Dyer kept on sending in these long passes, which intended to break the lines and give away the ball where most of our team was already up the field. Uh, Larice came out off his line and like tried to like chest the ball past Callum Wilson instead of clearing it. it. It was just like whack. I was like, what are you doing? Like, and I knew he was going to do it too. Like I was sitting there watching it happen. Like, no, Hugo, please don't. <laughs> and, and literally like we fell apart for like, like the rest of the half after he did that. It was like, it was really bad. Just the momentum shifted completely. And then, um, you know, I, you, know, when Lucas came in and when we scored the goal, things started to look a little better, but it was like, you know, I kind of knew it, it, it was, you know, it was over. Like there, I, I feel like every once in a while, you'll see like one thing we didn't really do last season that we're starting to do now is, you know, we'll go down or something. You see a little bit of defeatism in the team. And I yeah. think that's like, where Kulusevsky is important, right? Mm -hmm. He's very creative and calm and he makes really good decisions under pressure. And I think like Kane sometimes can do that, but this season he's been used more as a nine than a 10. And so he doesn't really like- That's true. He's ha he hasn't been setting up plays as much. He's been asked to finish things. And so we don't really have someone like, controlling the creativity I think like Rodrigo Bentancourt had an insane game against Newcastle he was incredible I felt so bad for him when did you guys sign him was... right? is it this past, this past no it was Jan January last year so oh, it was okay. with Kulisevsky yeah. okay and yeah. like he he was everywhere he was doing everything and then he'd get the ball forward and we'd give it away and Perisic was awful and then Sessegnon was also awful. So it was just like, you know, I I felt pretty bad after that one, I'll be honest. It just, it, it felt like a capitulation where they kind of gave up. And it, it kind of felt not as bad as the United game, but mm. similar where I was like, why couldn't these players like change their mentality at any point during this game? Do you know what I mean? I didn't yeah. see, I don't know if it, that's like part of the system coaching like you know sticking to the system so much that it's hard to switch gears that you're like supposed to believe in the system to work and you don't have to worry about like you know really changing momentum or something but like it, it's pretty frustrating as a fan to watch and even when we scored I was never really confident that we would make it happen really? so so either thing is Kulosevsky's in or available different story but with the players I had on the pitch and how they were playing, once we got scored on, like even with just the first time, uh, I knew that it wasn't going to go our way. And so it's interesting because a lot of people are getting really defeatist. I'm actually not because we were in a much worse position at this time last year. Oh, yeah. And I think yeah. there is still time for like, you know, things to click and things to change. And we are playing in a way that did not look good and was not very fun for the entire season so far. So it might just mean we'll continue to eke out those wins and stuff and drop points in stupid ways. But in January, we'll do some business and the World Cup will shake things up and we can we yeah. can take advantage of that. So I'm just trying to be positive. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's you're in top four right it. now. You're in top four. Yeah. So. Yeah. La last Could season, I was like, I was like, we had lost three games in a row, three zero, all derbies. So I mean, losing to a pretty informed Newcastle doesn't feel that bad. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I would blame your. Uh, do you know like the one thing I would blame this loss on? If you could guess on, I guess it's two Which, words. What? What? Two words. 
Come on. Eric Dyer. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what is it? Jack Grealish. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I mean, no way. <laughs> am I right? Or am I right? Come on, come on. He talked oh he talked god. he talked major shit about Miggy Alberon and look what I happened. I love Miggy. I actually love Miggy. It made me sad that he scored because I'm usually really happy when Miggy scores. <laughs> like he's an he came from the MLS. I love him. What he did? Yeah, he was like what? the uh record like record transfer out of the MLS. When How did I not know that? Wait, I, I knew he was Paraguayan. Where, when did he do it? Where, where did he play for? Yeah, I don't remember. I it was like think Salt it Lake was City, maybe. maybe? Uh, it, I feel like it's somewhere in the South. I can't remember what club it was, but he was there first and How he came to he Newcastle. Though? Pretty young. It, it's been, he's been in the Premier League for a while. Yeah, it feels like, like he's... Uh, you don't come to the Premier League old. From the he's 28 years old. Yeah, but I think it was oh. six years ago, maybe. He, yeah, I'm trying to find. He played for Atlanta. You know, okay, come on, yeah, yeah, that yeah, makes sense. They, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And then, yeah, he played for Atlanta United. Before that, he played for uh, some team in Paraguay. So, oh no, in Argentina, sorry. But hey, what a what a what a step up! I know comes from, from MLS. Newcastle. Well, he's been at Newcastle though, huh? How valid are do you think the the sun stuff is with him? Oh, Real Madrid was that quote like bigger club or something. Oh, um, I think uh, so I know like um, I, I here's here's my thing. I think if you're sunny and you're um, I think he's thirty, if not almost thirty. And you know, like, you probably have two, three years left to be, like, like, great. And he's, you know, his dad is very hard and intense and says he will ne- not be a world-class player unless he plays for a big club, this which he doesn't can, can <laughs> consider Spurs to be. I don't really blame him for looking elsewhere, and I've said this before, um, although I would be, like, heartbroken to see him go somewhere else it would really suck I I love him I don't know I I think it's possible I think there have been like questions asked for a long time why Real Madrid wouldn't go for him because he would be exactly a player that would slot into the way they play and he'd be like you know Gareth Bale uh, exactly like he he would be great for them uh but I've heard like either Bayern or Real Madrid is a possible next destination for him. And I think if we don't win something soon, that might be what we see happen. I can see it's kind of like an Ericsson situation kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And like, especially like so much pressure has been on him and Kane to like carry the team for a long time. And I think there was a lot of hope with the Conte project that that would kind of, it would allow them to do what they do best, but without like, forcing them to do everything and I'm not sure we've really seen that yet so I wouldn't be that surprised if his people are trying to push him to go somewhere else where he can do like what he's good at and not necessarily be asked to do everything to fit a certain role that may not be exactly what he is best at yeah yeah and to be honest like he has to track back a considerable amount for Conte which is like fine. Like Mourinho asked him to do that as well, but the whole intent under Mourinho was track back and then use Kane as like a uh, a pivot point to then release you to score goals. And right now, like he's being asked to kind of like progress the ball up the pitch and then be part of a system and go central instead of acting as a true winger. And it's just things that don't like maximize his potential, and we have obviously seen that it's not really suiting him. Um, can I say something just really fast? If he goes to Bayern, <laughs> Son and Mane. Oh my god! I know. I was surprised. Yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, that'd be insane. And also, they're friends. They're like good they? friends. Yeah. How? Because they were both in the Bundesliga at about the same time oh, before Mane yeah, went to Liverpool. And wait, where did Mane play at? I don't remember where Mane was at. Leverkusen or something. It seems to be so they like, 
Yeah, so like oh. Burnt Leno and Sun and oh. Mane are, are all like good oh. friends from being in the Bundesliga together. Wait he was at Salzburg. Yeah, yeah, but Salzburg's that's in Austria. Yeah, that's mm, right. maybe that's... I'm lying, but no, I know he... that they like they know each other. I don't know. I mean, it, he, he yeah. played a, from 2012 to 2014 Salzburg, then Southampton, which is everybody forgets that. Everybody forgets that. I do. And then. That, yeah. Then he but like a Liverpool. ton of Liverpool players have come from Southampton because Van Dyke yeah, came Dyke from there Dyke, too. Yeah. Yep, yep. And also uh, maybe Origi. Oh. Maybe Origi. I'm not sure. But there was like uh, another. I don't remember who no, it was. He did play in the Bundesliga. I'll tell you that. But I don't. It says for his stats, he played 11 matches and scored five goals. So. Mm. Um, How is? Yeah. Wait, oh my god! I'm stupid. Oh, <laughs> oh that's that's this that's this that's this year <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's oh, pretty funny nice but uh nice. but yeah so they know each other i know they like it, it would be crazy but i i could see him going somewhere else basically yeah, and I, would, I, would I wouldn't him. blame him and i've always kind of had that mentality it's much easier to see him go to a team in another league than when I was Facts. considering Kane right. going to Man City. Yep, it's true. That's true. Well, I'm gl- they're they're glad they didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, now they have to be something even worse though. Holland, goddamn it. Yeah. Uh, Gaming, okay. Game and hit on target. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And I think Kane's transfer fee would have been like over double what Holland's was. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah. So yeah, quite a difference. Okay. Well, that was the Premier League and. Uh, Sun and Mane. I really hope that doesn't. Okay, but all right. La Liga. Let's get into it. First place, Real Madrid. Second place, Barcelona. Third place, Atletico Madrid. Fourth place, Real Sociedad. Fifth place, Real Betis. And 20th place is Elche. Match day 11. Let's get into it. Real Vercano in Cadiz. Five to one for Real Vercano. Battering Cadiz. Red cards for both teams because they were both naughty. Valladolid and Real Sociedad one to nil for Valladolid. Valencia and Mallorca one to two for Mallorca. Real Madrid and Sevilla three to one for Real Madrid. Basic performance for them. Espanyol and Elche two all two to two here. Real Betis and Atlético Madrid one to two. Atlético Madrid keeping up their hot streak. Good for them. Then Girona and Asasuna one 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 all there. Villarreal in Armenia, 2 to 1 for Villarreal and red card for Villarreal because they are not a Barcelona in Atletico Madrid, battering, battering at the club Barcelona 4 to 0. Celta Vigo and Getaf, 1 all there, 1 to 1. All right, do you guys want to talk about a bit of the Spanish league? I know both of you definitely watched the La Liga, and <laughs> if you could say something about it, maybe, maybe just say your favorite, I don't know, Spanish. Uh, order at a Mexican restaurant. At a Mexican restaurant, not a Spanish restaurant. Uh, <laughs> if I speak, I'm a total. Oh my god! <laughs> you're, you're, like, you're like the kids in my class, where I'm like, they're like, where did where where does the language Spanish come from? And they all say Mexico. Mexico? No, I, I, I'm kidding, guys. It's okay. It's a prank. It's a prank. All right. Um, did you did any of you happen to hear or watch any of this beautiful? League? Uh, uh, no. You can be honest. It's okay. I watched uh, the Real Madrid game. Oh, which hey. is uh, funny because actually um, Eric Lamella is the one who scored for Sevilla. Whoa, and nice. Earlier, Andrew and I were talking about him, and I was like, "Does he even play?" And I forgot that I watched the game where he scored. <laughs> that's that's true. That is very true. I mean, they uh, three to one. I mean, what can, what else can you do when you have? I mean, did, Benzema didn't even play. I don't think he even played. Yeah, no, he didn't. Well, no. Mother scored. Vasquez scored. Too busy but, polishing his Ballon d'Or. I mean, I would too. Valverde scored. Eric Lamella scored. Yeah, he scored too. But yeah, stats really go in the favor of Real Madrid. I can't really say anything else. Yeah, that, so. <laughs> it it wasn't a surprise. Um, yeah. I really like. I've said this before. I really like Ancelotti. I love him. I think he's great. So every once in a while, I watch Real Madrid because I I. I just like um, the freedom he gives his players and stuff. So sometimes they can be like sort of terrible to watch, but when they like click, it's it's really fun. Especially Rodrigo and uh, Vinny Jr. They are oh yeah so talented and Valverde. 
Uh, yeah, I think. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I just I think um, they've got a, like a lot of really young, interesting talent, which I know we say about Barcelona too. But I think it's easy to hear all about Pedri and Gabby, but like what they have in Camavinga and Vinny and uh, Valverde is, you know, it's pretty exciting. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 I was just gonna track back to the Premier League real quick because I forgot to mention it, but yeah. Um, good evening. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. That's that's on memes of the week. Just wait. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, are you? Are I'm you so excited? Are you? Yes. Are you? Oh, are you? Yes. Guys in a fire. Uh, what I mean, heck? that is. Oh my that god. Is the club. Wait, but he he won the Europa League with who was it with? Uh, help me out here. Villarreal. Was, and you he guys beat don't Man know United. what happened. Austin Villa disappointed uh, Unai Amri. The French, I believe he's French uh, coach. I thought he was Turkish. Oh, shit. I'm Maybe I'm like completely wrong. I might be really wrong. No, I believe you. You're probably right. Uh, yeah. It was uh, It was the team. I'm trying to think of the team you wanted with. It was, they have like the yellow submarine thing. Yeah, that's a uh, uh, Villarreal. Is it? Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So he was born. Oh, wow. I guess we're both wrong. He is Spanish. Yeah, he's Spanish. That's that. What I did I say? At it. I'm like, I said French. You said French, which is closer French. than Turkish. I don't know why <laughs> I thought he was Turkish. Yeah. I don't know where that came from. Honestly, um, you see the black hair. I'm like, for some reason, he has the way he has it slicked back. I'm like, fair enough. Fair. Yeah. All right. All right. Back to La Liga. I mean, I can only say about this Barcelona. I mean, Griezmann scored two goals for Atletico Madrid. He's been on fire for Atletico Madrid, so fair enough for him. Then Barcelona. <laughs> Yeah, Usman Dembele, Sergio Roberto, Robert Lewandowski, and then Ferran Torres. Just good performance for them. So, yeah, doesn't really do justice. All right, Syria. Now, let's get into it. First place is Napoli, continuing the health streak. AC Milano, second place. Third place, Lazio. Fourth place, Atalanta. And then fifth place is Etze Roma. Then 20th place is Cremonese. And then match 11. Let's get into it. Juventus and Impoli. Besides, Juventus is... Disgusting form, 4 to nil for them against Empoli. Salentana and Spezia, 1 to nil for Salentana. Etzi Milano and Monza, 4 to 1 for Etzi Milano, battering Monza. Fuentina and Inter Milano, 4 to 3 for Inter Milano. Great game if you haven't seen the highlights for this one. Udinese and Torino, 2 to 1 for Torino. Bologna and Les, 2 to nil for Bologna. And then Atalanta in Lazio, 2 to nil for Lazio. Red card for Atalanta, bang, no, hey. Roma in Napoli, great. Nah, I wouldn't say it's the best game, but it was a good game. Nil to one for Napoli, keeping their win streak going on. Cremonese in Sampdoria, nil to one for Sampdoria. And then Sassuolo to Verona, 2 to one for Sassuolo. All right, but... ah. Uh, Juventus, they they've been doing very very poor lately, but at least they at least got a great successful one to boost their confidence up. Inter, yeah, that was a great game. I I didn't watch it, but I was watching along with the highlights, and I just kept getting notifications one after the other for this, and it was uh, based on the highlights as well too. Great game for Inter, and then also I can say for Napoli, great game for them as well too. So keeping up the win streak, five wins in a row, which is Beautiful, especially in, in the Serie A, where there's so much inconsistency good for them. Any of you want to talk about the Serie A or possibly about what's your favorite, Velveeta or Kraft Mac and Cheese? I don't mind. I, I was just going to I was gonna say I feel sorry for Kremlin Nesse because their emblem isn't even. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's tough. That's tough. Zero that's wins. a bad. It's a double win. It's a bad look. <laughs> I mean, oh, I mean, I wouldn't show their. They kind of do have a weird emblem, to be fair. Yeah, no, I did. I, I was looking it up while you were talking, just to be sure. And, yeah, I, I can hear. I'll, I'll just do this. Yeah. Oh, whoa! You would think this team would be in Croatia or something like that. The power of editing. Yes. <laughs> I am a god. <laughs> All right. I mean, anything you guys want to talk about, Syria? It's like not really Syria related, but. Supposedly, the big 
the big ask from Conte for the January transfer window is Weston McKinney, which Ooh. I think maybe people are taunting me with this because they've been talking about Weston as a transfer target for Spurs yeah, that's for Leeds. like no, two he's going years. To he's going to Leeds. Oh, I, I heard I heard they had offered um, a swap deal for him and uh, Sambi Lakonga. Mm. No way, really. Yeah, mm. I heard that was, uh, but then again, I'm like, well, if we, Juventus wants Sambi, maybe he's actually good. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but, <laughs> right. <laughs> but I also wouldn't be mad with, with McKinney either. But then again, yeah, it's I, not, we're not really adding depth, we're just changing it. So uh, it doesn't really do anything. Yeah. I think he's great. I would love to have him at Spurs. I'd be heartbroken if he goes to Arsenal, but I also would. I would think it would work well. I think he'd have a good time. Yeah. I mean, I want to see him go to Leeds. <laughs> I just, just, want every just American... so it can be America. Yes, America FC. Yes. That's Even what's... though I'm pretty sure Jesse will probably get fired pretty soon. I really don't want that. I, feel like... I don't either. I don't. I love Jesse, but he's, I don't think he's won in, in nine oh, games, maybe. Nine? Really? Eight or nine. Yeah. The last time he won was against Chelsea. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do yeah. we do to people? We build up their confidence. See what Chelsea I know. does. Disgusting. Get too hyped about Americans. Same with Christian Pulisic. Ugh, uh, too bad. Where, where's he been? Uh, he scored a goal a couple games ago. Oh, oh, I thought he was out. No. No, he's doing. He's actually like coming off the bench and looking better under Potter, but he looked awful under Tuchel at the end. He would come on and just... I thought he I, looked I want, really I bad. I want post-lockdown Pulisic. That's what I want. I yeah, want he bit. popped off. Yeah. All right. Now, let's go to Bundesliga. All right. First place is Union Berlin, keeping up their win streak. Uh, just kidding. They they lost. I hate you. The second place is Bayern München. Third place is Freiburg. Fourth place is Eintracht Frankfurt. And fifth place is Dortmund. And then 18th place is Schalke going down. Match day 11. Let's get into it. Mainz and Köln. 5 to nil for Mainz against Köln, who got a red card because they were naughty. All right. And then Freiburg and Werder Bremen. 2 to nil for Freiburg. Red card for Werder Bremen. They were naughty again. Hoffenheim and Bayern München. 2 to nil for Bayern München. Chupa Moting. Great form right now, honestly. Leverkusen and Wolfsburg. 2 to 2. 2 all there. Augsburg and Leipzig. 3 to 3. A great game if you want to watch the highlights. Here and a red card for being big nil. Dortmund and Stuttgart five to nil for Dortmund. Ay, yay, yay. And then Bayern Munich Gladbach and Eintracht Frankfurt one to three for Eintracht Frankfurt. Then Bochum and Union Berlin two to one for Bochum and the Hertha Berlin and Schalke two to one here. I feel like I literally probably read the scores from another game so i feel yep i did oh my god <laughs> shit <laughs> um the thing that matters right now is just hear me out i i can tell you right now for the bundesliga that at least did i even read the right games did i I did the read the right games. I'm pranking myself. I don't, I'm. <laughs> Were you worried you did like last week or something? Yeah, like I was that? so confused. <laughs> uh, okay. Did they? Wait, was there no games this past weekend? No, the 22nd was on Saturday. What is? I I I. Okay, something's. You're just keeping things interesting, keeping us on our toes. It's I'll never fine. know my own next moves. I'll tell you. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um. Only really thing I can say about this is Dortmund. Ah, great for them. Jude Bellingham, of course. Well, beautiful play right there. Then Gio Reyna, the young American, doing great for them. And then Yusofo Mokoko, keeping up his beautiful form as a young player. Then Nicolas Sula scoring as well, too. Yeah, I mean, that's for Dortmund. And as well for, we can say, for Mainz. Ah, Mainz is doing great now on a hot streak. And also for Frankfurt, I did watch that game. And great game and great honestly great couple runs for Frankfurt as well too with uh, Lindstrom and Eric Junior Dine and Bimbe doing great as well who might actually get a call up to France because of his form and it's it's crazy honestly right now all these players are trying their hardest to get into the squads and it's it's working it's working I mean it's it's gonna just give a lot of squad rotations to the national team it's gonna be a lot of more interesting players because they're just showing their skills and Hey, you never know who can end up in 
uh, Veronica, you might get a call up to the United States if you get a Hattie on the next game tomorrow. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I was just actually talking trash about Christian Pulisic so that I could obviously take him his spot as as the number ten for the U.S. I, men's national team. So I could see it. I, I can. Oh really yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, do you have any you guys have anything else to say about the Bundesliga besides Union Berlin? Where? Oh, that's what I was gonna say. I really want them to hold up. They lost. Why did they have to? They lost to like the seventeenth place too. <laughs> <sighs> I feel sad for Goat Team getting crushed so badly by Mines because uh, Cone yeah. is kind of like I, I. I mostly follow Dortmund when I watch the Bundesliga, but like my yeah. like side piece in the Bundesliga <laughs> is Cone. <Side> piece. <laughs> Everybody just, has like, a side piece team. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> In every league, I've got my main team that I follow and then the side piece, and they're that. So, sad for GOAT team. You know what? Um, I did, like, a, what's it called? With one of my agent, Dimitri, I did a guess the badge, like, guess the team based on the badge, and he called that team the Devil Worshippers. <laughs> no, that's so funny. <laughs> no, I'm serious, because they're, they're, their <laughs> thing literally looks like a... Um, I... It's... <laughs> I, I I'm trying to pull. I'm gonna pull up the picture of his, but it literally looks like a. Come on. Yeah, no team. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, it's not scary at all. Okay, but <laughs> all right. Yeah, so that was Bundesliga, and then last one: Uber Eats, League Un. Let's get into it. PSG first place. All right, guys, that was a good time. Champions League. Let's get into the Champions League now, and. Uh, you guys, by the way, it did not cut off. I'm just saying PSG, they're going to win Ligue 1. Is there anything else to say? Absolutely not. All right. Champions League. Let's get into it. Oh, this is a great week. Salzburg and Chelsea, 2-1 to one for Chelsea. PSG and Maccabi Haifa, 7-2 to two for PSG. Dino Zagreb and AC Milano, nil to 4 for AC Milano, battering Zeno Zagreb. I don't know what that was. Celtic and Shakhtar Donetsk, 1-1 one, one all there. Great game here, actually. Sevilla and Copenhagen, 3 to nil for Sevilla. Red card for Copenhagen being naughty. Dortmund and Manchester City, nil to nil there. Disappointed for Manchester City. Benfica and Juventus, 4 to 3 for Benfica. Great game here. RB Leipzig and Real Madrid, 3 to 2 for Leipzig, beating out Real Madrid's hot win streak. Inter Milano and Victoria Pizin, 4 to nil for Inter Milano, battering Victoria Pizin. Eintracht Frankfurt and Marseille, 2-1 for Eintracht Frankfurt. Then Ajax and Liverpool, nil to 3 for Liverpool. Basic win for them. Tottenham, Sporting, uh, iffy game, one all there. Club Bruges and Porto, nil to 4 for the Portuguese side, Porto. Barcelona and Bayern München, nil to 3 for Bayern München. Patrick Barcelona, I am very normal. Atletico Madrid and Leverkusen, 2 all there, 2-2. Two, two. Then Napoli. And Glasgow Rangers, 3 to nil for Napoli, continuing their amazing win streak. Ah, Champions League. This was a fun time. Peter, you can stay. Did you? Okay, Peter, did you watch any of the Champions League games? I'm just asking for a friend. No. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Let Let me just say, okay, Chelsea, they did win. It was a little shaky, not gonna lie, but. Both goals great for Chelsea. Mateo Kovacic scoring and Kai Havas. Oh, what a beautiful worldie in the top left corner. And also Junior Adamu scoring and doing the gritty. I'm not offended. I honestly love the dance. That was beautiful. But yeah, Chelsea comfortable. They did qualify. PSG, they did win. And Messi, Neymar, Mbappe. Um, Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, that's what they are. That's what they do. They won. They qualified. It's in Milano. They did qualify, I believe, for this. Yeah, I did. They qualified. But and then Celtic and Shakhtar Donetsk. I believe Shakhtar Donetsk did qualify as well. And beating out Celtic, which needed a point to qualify, but they did not. And uh, Dortmund and Manchester City. I know they both qualified. Both of them needed a tire or win to qualify. I believe City did, but yeah, they both qualified. And then Juventus did not qualify, which is crazy because for the first time in nine years, Juventus did not qualify to the round of 16, which is 
Ooh, if that tells Arsenal you about vibes. Juventus, what'd you say? Arsenal vibes. I know. <laughs> it's already said and done. Like they're definitely going to either Europa or they're out. Yep, that is true. Wow, that's it, crazy. The old lady died. Oh, that's kind of bad. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. And then Leipzig and Real Madrid, three to two. And let me just say, do 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 team over team over yeah team over scored good for him yeah um Real Madrid and also and Gunku my favorite player scoring for Leipzig thank you for putting on a show for all the Chelsea fans that are can't wait to see you in the summer of 2023 if you don't come I will probably cry for a couple days but it's okay so love you heart heart and yeah Inter they needed Victoria Pazin to beat Inter, I mean, Barcelona needed Victoria Present to beat Inter to be able to stay in the Champions League. And now, <laughs> oh, Inter, my lovely Italian team, you did great things for everybody in the world. So, yeah. Just keep the Barcelona salty fanboys out of the um, uh, Champions League. Thing. I feel bad. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I, I, I'm just heartbroken because I do not give one single crap of what I say. All right. I talk Frankfurt. They did win. And great win for them, Daichi Kamada, beautiful Japanese man, scoring. And then another guy, Kimbe Bimbimbe. I don't know his name. I said his name wrong. But he does score as well, too. And they, it's funny, for this group, Eintracht Frankfurt, Marseille, and uh, Tottenham, and Sporting, all these teams have the ability. I don't, actually, I don't know about, I think Sporting is qualified no matter what, but... No, I've, they're not. No? They're not. Okay, okay. Everybody, everybody's these, still up, I think. That's a crazy fact. All these teams have the possibility of either making it into the Champions League or not making it into Europa League or making it into Europa League. That's absolutely crazy. That's an insane stat, but yeah, yeah, that's... I thought it was amazing. And then, uh, yeah, Liverpool, Mohamed Salah, and Darwin Nunez, what is good for him lately? doing great and then a shocker for Atletico Madrid they I believe they did not make it as well too and um Napoli uh Diego Simeon's daughter I mean sorry what the heck his uh son scoring for Napoli two goals I I forgot his name actually do do you know Diego Simeon Giovanni right Giovanni Simeone? Simeone yep yeah I like that that sounds nice um. Yeah, but he scored two goals for Napoli against Rangers. So yeah, go for it. All right. Do you want to talk about the Tottenham game? Yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, um, okay. we were bad in the first half. We we were really bad, and um, just very flat. No chances. I think we made like point one xg or something like that. So we just really didn't do anything. Uh, and Marcus Edwards, an ex Tottenham player scored on us with a like a low drive oh, yeah, great but, shot great is he shot like 18 years old right he's no he's he's like older but he left tottenham when he was 18 i think oh, okay so um, he yes. left tottenham six years ago Ooh. um and to be honest like i don't know like it's a little bit tough seeing like you know getting scored on by an next player but it's like you want them to succeed so i don't like you know i don't want to tottenham to be scored on at all so if it's going to be someone, it's okay that it's him. But um, then the second half, uh, we put on my son, Brian Hill, <laughs> absolute Spanish king, tiny Paul McCartney looking man. And he yeah. changed the entire game. He was amazing. We made a ton of chances. We could have easily won the game. Eric Tyre had two opportunities that he put wide pretty, pretty poorly. And then Kane did win the game pretty much. Uh, but it was called no, it was called back for offside. But the yeah. VAR call took four minutes in order to do it. So, to me, I'm like, if it's taking you four minutes, it's not obvious enough that it was offside. It wasn't so, offside. <laughs> it wasn't, it just wasn't. I, yeah, it just wasn't. But basically, I think you know, as much as it's frustrating to see it happen like that, the like, you know, one could point at Spurs and say, you had so many other chances, you know, blah, 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 this, that. It, you know, it could have ended differently in many different ways. It's very frustrating to have that goal taken back unfairly. Yeah. Um, but I am choosing 
now because it's been a couple hours to think about it more as like Brian Hill hype train. Hopefully mm-hmm. we see him in the Premier League. Uh, there was talk earlier in the week that Conte wanted to send him out on loan in January. And I really hope like this sort of performance, like the difference he can make shows that he sh- absolutely should not because uh, he was incredible. I don't watch many Tottenham games, but in the Premier League, at least, does he come on regularly? No, no. Oh, I like yeah. we all ask for him to come on and we never see him. I yeah, think yeah. he came on. He came on. At the end of the Eintracht game last week, two yeah. weeks ago, I don't remember when that was. Two weeks ago, because last that week was, like it was a the United game. game. I believe, right? or it no, it was the three. It was the three-two. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. He, he came on in that game, and he was the one. He won a penalty for Harry Kane, the yep. one he missed, and he like oh. immediately made a huge difference. And he, I think he got like five minutes at the end of the United game and looked really good. But like, that's not really helpful at that point to give him so little time so the thing with Conte is he's like it's really important for him that he trusts that the player understands the system so a lot of players that show a lot of potential don't get any minutes because he doesn't trust them to play the system like same with uh, Jed Spence both of them have come on and gotten like three or four minutes at the end of games because Conte is willing to give them that because he's like it's okay if they don't follow the system at this point but they're showing like a lot of talent and ambition and drive and ability to like change the energy of a game. So I'm just hoping I see more of him. And if he goes on loan in January, I will be sad. Yeah. And that's my takes. Uh, If he goes on loan, I hope at least he goes to maybe like a team in the prem or I don't know, some, some other team, not, I don't want to see it in La Liga again because he already proved himself there. Yeah, uh, maybe like that's, that's the problem, Syria or something like that, uh, or even like honestly, the Bundesliga, just because of like the yeah. physicality of the league, it would force him to kind of like you know, if he could get more minutes, yeah, in, in a league like that, he'd have to like get more used to an interesting matchup, like him and Hudson and Doy. Whoa, that would be interesting, but then again, you have Diaby there, which is kind of we Diaby is amazing right now, but yeah, yeah, that would be interesting, yeah. Um, yeah, did, did you, <laughs> are you happy about the barca Bayern game? Yes, absolutely. Me too. Me too. I'm <laughs> definitely happy them. about that. In the Europa League, just, uh, I mean, Mane and, um, let me try to think who scored. I know Mane scored the first goal and, uh, second goal was, oh, trying to, I know the last goal was Pavard with a weird deflection shot from Gnabry and the second goal it was oh of course Chupamoting which I yeah. guess Barcelona they they took the wrong striker from Bayern <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, they should have got Chupamoting instead of Lewandowski what, what are they doing but yeah that's uh am I mad not really I mean Bayern's just another beast it's kind of hard to compete with them so yeah yeah and they're starting to click now which they had like some growing pains at the beginning of the season mm-hmm. but i you know i could see them going pretty far in the champions league this year so i'm excited to see what happens okay yeah all right well now everybody let us get on to our favorite time of the week and that is football meme of the week brought to you by our beautiful Akun 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 football here brought to you by rivals banters and football memes for the lads first meme let us get into it and we know we love our ronaldo banter all right <laughs> so there's a picture of Ronaldo who's just like looking up at the heavens after he missed a goal. Someone tweeted, Ronaldo returning to Manchester United is a life lesson that we shouldn't return to our ex. <laughs> and then someone replied, Well, the story. So, I mean, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <it's fine. laughs> I was muted. So, uh, but yeah, I just want to say he was a total weenie for walking out at the end of the Tottenham game. It was like the best United performance, so and he leaves early. Yeah, because he was being a weenie, so he got memed. Not even a weenie. He deserved it. Super weenie hot junior. That's what he was. Yeah, yep. 100%. <laughs> All right, and then I have another meme for Ronaldo. I mean, not really, but yeah, so someone's texting with their girl. They're just like, hi, 
and I was watching football. I'm sorry, sorry, sleeping. Can I call you? And then she texts back to call Ronaldo. Bye. <laughs> I, don't know. I thought it was funny. That's a pretty good comeback. I like that. That's like it's like all the girls out there are watching, and that you know you have a guy that watches football, and you secretly maybe you do like football, but if he ever like ghost you for a game, do this. So hey, there we go. All right. Next meme, let us get into it. Reese James currently had a recently had a haircut because you need, um, <clears throat> I guess, everybody, if you can't see right now, it's a picture of Reese James with honestly, I can't lie, it's a nice fresh trim. <laughs> and right next to it, what'd you say? It was a bad omen, yeah. Right next the, to me, the cut is good, it's just why green because, and right next to him, by the way, it's like a Minecraft block. A, a dirt Minecraft block. So, ah, oh my gosh, what he misses the pitch so much because he's injured now. He had to get it on his head. So, <laughs> so yeah, that uh, being good for him. Yeah, it it looks nice. He is a very, very attractive man. It's, uh, it's ten out of ten would smash. All right, now let us see the next name. Good evening, everybody. As you don't know, Une Amri <laughs> joined Asavia and all these years. He's finally had them all. He coached Sevilla. Sevilla. He coached uh... Villa Real. Villa Real. And now he's coaching Austin Villa. Austin Villa. He, he got all the Villas. He's completed football. Um, Zidane, get out of here. Ancelotti, disgusting. Nagelsmann, dis- absolutely disgusting. Tuchel, no. Absolutely not. I think Unai Amri, he's caught them all. All the all, all the the uh, all the V's. So, yeah. Is he gonna do good? I'm so excited. Yes. You, you think he he's is. gonna do good? Yes. I don't, I don't, uh, Cause yeah, I think about it. Think about it really quickly with me. VRL had a team full of rejects from the Premier League, and I'm not kidding. Cause there were like four ex Tottenham players that did not make it at Tottenham that were at yeah. VRL, yeah. and he had them out playing plenty of teams with way more resources so if you're in the premier league sure they're not gonna like be playing maybe the prettiest style ever but i think he'll get them like working together really well and maximize like you know the players that he has i think the like none of the players from vs said anything or villa said anything when gerard left i don't know i said gerard like it was his name but gerard yeah. He didn't leave, like, like they didn't say dad. anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, so they didn't say anything. I think everyone seems to really like Unai Emery. I think it'll be great. I'm excited. I'm ready for him to cause chaos. As long as he waits to do it after uh, Spurs play Villa, that works for me. Uh, I won't get we'll Douglas Costa now because he's going to be like, oh, no. Wait, like... wait, what? Douglas Costa? What? Yeah, what about him? He's gonna go. He's going to Via. No, no. Well, Arsenal tried to sign him before the transfer window closed. Uh, Douglas Luiz. Oh, I'm Douglas thinking. Luis. Yeah, Douglas Costa plays for LA Galaxy or something. Yeah, I must. Uh, yeah, I was flipping it then. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so if we still want Luiz, I don't know what happened. Mm, that would yeah. Be exciting. Yeah. Okay. Well, everybody. I mean, do you guys have any transfer talks you want to talk about or anything like that? I already complained about Brian possibly being sent away. That yeah. would be my biggest concern. And then oh. also supposedly we want to get a a defender and a central midfielder, but we say that all the time. I, I mean, right now you can't really say anything because it's everybody's focusing on the World Cup. That's let's be honest. That's no one really doesn't want. I don't think there's going to be many transfer moves for January because everybody's going to be focused on the World Cup. And after that, they're going to just want to, you know, chill, I guess, and then focus well, on Well, no, because usually – We're just saying World Cup is usually like a showcase, right? So during the summer, like, you know, obviously at the World Cup, and then during the summer, they see a lot of players who did well in the World Cup kind of move around or get traction. That yeah. would be surprising if the same thing happens in January. So here's my question where I'm completely uneducated based on how this will work. How, how like, is the transfer window going to be the same – like time that it usually is like I mean, how much overlap in it's starting in january so yeah because the so, world cup won't go past like the second week of december yeah, yeah i guess you're right so the nice thing is that teams will already know like 
I know this sounds crass, but like who's injured, you know, like you won't, a lot of teams like wait until after a tournament in like summer transfer windows to make any signings. But and, I think yeah. this will like make it a little bit easier to really go after players because you'll see what they have and you'll know who's like, you know, who's going to be back and ready to finish out the season. Yeah. And honestly, I'm just going to say this right now. You're going to notice a very, very poor next three weeks of football. I'm, and I'm pretty sure we all know why players yeah. are just try to save their stamina for, and like not get injured for it before the world cup. So I mean, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Maybe, maybe like, you know, teams like, you know, Holland and Norway, Odegaard at Norway, and then other teams as well too. Like all the Italians are going to do good. I mean, good Georgie, you know, score a hat trick and a bicycle quick. Why not? But yeah, that's, that's really all. Is it going to be maybe some poor showcases of football, but Hey, it's okay for the world. Are they, they're not pausing any of the leagues while this is happening, right? They're oh. just going to keep going. No, they, yeah, they, no, this they, they they I think they purposely started earlier this year. Yeah, they did. To have so the break there's... for the World Cup. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. I was I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised about that. I thought they would just keep going. No, oh, that would have been that that would have been terrible. <laughs> during uh, I mean, women's been... were during the <laughs> women's World Cup, all the leagues like well, so during the women's World Cup, the NWSL regular season is going, so they yeah. just have to keep playing. But because of that, they have rules for within the league for how many like international players you can have. So it's like if yeah. you have like, uh, you know, three U.S. women's national team players on your team, you can only get like one Canadian or one Brazilian. Then, like, you know, like there's, you can't have more than a certain amount of like players that are called up to their national teams on your team because BS, they play what the hell? and they they play games while there's international breaks that's so bullshit. so you just that's... have to be able to field a full team without your international that's players so stupid that's ridiculous mm -hmm. no it, yeah, yeah it's kind of it's, it's pretty wild what did you say like there's not okay it's not like football where you have a certain amount of, you have a roster cap on the amount of players mm -hmm. you can have there is a roster cap yeah really yeah, and there's there's an allocation cap where it's like you can't spend more than a certain amount of money on like players and pay player is this, salaries. Is this just the league? Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's is just it basically like a financial thing. Like there's only a certain amount of money to go around or something. It's a two part thing where part of it is a way to keep the league from being really dominated from one team. So actually, the NWSL one great thing about it is that. Uh, you any game you tune into, no idea what the result is going to be. Like Portland is a really strong team consistently, so it's likely that they'll win. But like, they're the bottom of the league can beat the top of the league any any time. That just yeah. happens because the sense. delta between the teams is really not that big. Um, but the delta between like the best player in the league and like the the best player on the team and the worst player on the team, while the international players are there. There's a pretty obvious difference, yep. like especially when you go to see the games in person, you can like really identify who's the star pretty easily. But it, it keeps like the teams more competitive against each other. And it also is because the two previous professional women's leagues in the U.S. both failed because teams would overspend. Mm -hmm. So this stops clubs from overspending and having to crumble. So it, it's worked out pretty well. There's been plenty of other issues with it, like because of that sort of inconsistency, players get traded like really at the drop of the hat. So, for example, one season, Christy Mewis was at like, I think, uh, like Boston and she got traded to Chicago, was in Chicago for one game and then got traded to Houston. So in, in a week, she had to move two times. That's so weird. America. It was so. It terrible. sounds like a problem that, that they need to fix the overspending. Whoever the owners are, not the the league. Yeah, I think they just know that the problem is because women's sports are only. No, it, like a big thing is like women's sports. Really, when the league started, like people weren't watching. It was streamed on like on like Yahoo Sports. <laughs> like it was streamed on Yahoo Sports, and it's only like recently that. Basically, the thing is, in order to start a league, 
you need to be willing to take a lot of loss at first because you need to put things out there and promote it in order to get attention on it. And people just weren't willing to do that. So they had to limit the spending and lower the cost of the leagues like to an extreme amount to even have like them exist at all. And so the players had like very little rights and were paid very little. And unless you were on the national team, you basically uh, were not going to make a living wage being a professional footballer. Uh, And so like more recently though, like basically CBS picked up streaming rights to the league that's made a huge difference Budweiser is like the national sponsor now that's made a huge difference like when they started they didn't have a spot like league sponsors so you know things have changed a lot in the last couple years but you see the players are coming together to fight for better situations where the clubs won't have the same level of like power over them because now there is more protections for like club spending and stuff like that so it's yeah. pretty interesting. And fair enough. Also, FIFA, they do have women's club teams now in FIFA 23. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's exciting. Uh, like, I know, um, like, Leon is on there and Tottenham mm-hmm. Women is on there. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I wanted to do something. I already did this for Peter earlier in the show. But, Veronica, I have a couple questions. I call these the golden questions, all right? This is a quick fire okay. thing. Answer within five seconds, okay? Okay. This isn't gonna be like like uh, questions of your knowledge of football. Just like your just like questions for you. All right. So let me say the first questions. These are the golden questions. Let me play the theme song. I don't have a theme song, so I can't do anything. All right. Who is your first favorite player that made you fall in love with the beautiful game? Messi. Messi. Okay. All right. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Is there a reason why? I remember being uh, very young and watching, like, I I only had access to, like, the international games and seeing this, like, floppy-haired, tiny man dribble around people and being like, that's amazing. Yeah. So that's a men's player. The first women's player was Mia Hamm. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, and why is that for Mia Hamm? Uh, just an icon of the game for the U.S. And... For me, like sports are always huge, like to watch in my house. Uh, And I remember like the first women's sport that like was really easy to watch was the U.S. women's national team. So my dad like took it really upon himself to like make my sister and I watch as much of it as possible. So Mia Hamm is like my first soccer memory is watching and talking about Mia Hamm. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. All right. Second question. Who was your first favorite team? Oh God! Nope. Chicago on. Fire. Really? Chicago Fire. Really? Yeah, because because that that's who I could watch. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. What players did they have at that 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 time? I couldn't tell you. Okay. Yeah. Me too. But I I remember <laughs> I remember we would sometimes go to games. I remember being really excited uh going when the LA Galaxy came to play because Landon mm. Donovan was on the team. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember like my dad trying to tell me who was on the fire and I just like did not care at all because nope. I was so excited that Landon Donovan was there. Yeah. Fair okay. Third question. What is your favorite football match that you have been to and why? Uh Tottenham Southampton. And although we lost, it was the only Premier League game I've seen and the only oh, game you went in there Europe to- I've ever seen. Went yeah. Oh, I went sure, to nice. Southampton. I saw the game. And so it was bad in this way. We lost 1-0. It was mm. a Danny Ings goal. It was Ooh. a great goal. Yeah. But Kane got injured during the game and mm. Musa Soko got injured. But Bad the luck. iconic part about it was that Mourinho looked at, went, walked over to the like other team's bench looked at Ralph Huss and Hoodle's notes and called him a f- idiot and got <laughs> yellow carded for it. And then in, in the post-match interview, he was like, yeah, I shouldn't have done it, but I do stand by it because he is a f- <laughs> or something like that. That's so so I was just like, That's jokes. It, that is jokes. So the fact that I was like, you know, it was amazing to be there. The atmosphere was insane. It was an away game. So we were surrounded by people chanting about like, uh, Pochettino, he left because you're shit. He left because you're shit. Yeah. Like that was yeah. the chant because Poch used to be at Southampton before yeah. Spurs and it was just like an incredible experience I went with my sister and my dad and it was like the pre 
graduating college gift was my par- my like dad and my sister paying for me to get a ticket. That's nice. And we had gone over the winter break because we were like, oh, the games won't be on in the summer. And by the time the summer came around, there was a pandemic. So if we hadn't oh. gone then, I still wouldn't have gone. Also, right now, who is your favorite player of all time? Actually, no. Who is your favorite player of all time, in, like just in general, like to ever live? Uh, Crystal Dunn. What? Which is a women's player, Crystal Dunn. Okay, okay. She. So let me talk about her really quick because she's amazing she's still currently playing but i think she's had the biggest influence on like how i think about the game okay and and if i'm thinking about like you know if we're if we're talking like men's player it's probably still messy to be honest but crystal dunn is my favorite like women's player of all time and probably player of all time uh she is uh like for her club team a number 10 and so she's like a creative midfielder. She is incredible, like with her vision on the field. And she's super short, which I love because oh. I'm also super short. So I'm like, Wait, represent. Yeah. Oh, God. Anyway, <laughs> um, so it's okay. But, I'm but for the US women's national team, she converted to an outside back uh, in order to just get on the team. Basically, they told her, like, you're such a good player. We want you to play, but we have like, someone we want in this position already so can you play outside back and genuinely uh the last world cup she was probably the best defender in the entire tournament and that's not even her true position uh literally like last week in the playoff game it was portland thorns against san diego wave i think i might be no i i'm right it was over the weekend yeah uh she just had a baby like five months ago I think and she came back at the end of the game and scored in the 93rd minute an incredible like volley from outside the box left foot to put Portland through to the final of the NWSL playoffs which will be on Saturday after giving birth I know she's insane she's insane she was like she was literally seven months pregnant still going to U.S. Women's National Team training camps and like playing I think I heard about this honestly yeah. yeah she's awesome alex morgan did like a similar thing but yeah just because done like she's just you know you know when you like see a player who just like everything they do you can tell like how much they understand the game and I, like she never does anything that i'm like oh like like that's like an insane amount of skill like obviously she has it but she just does everything like right. She does everything like appropriate for the moment. And the fact that she's been able to like play so many different positions, like you could put her pretty much anywhere but the goal and she'd do a good job. Hmm. Just hard worker, I'm guessing. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. Okay. I don't even know if I should ask this next question. Who is currently your favorite player in the world right now? Sonny. Sonny? Oh, okay. Fair. Yeah. If he moves to a, a team, would you get that jersey? No. <laughs> no. Oh. No. I would get a uh, probably a sunny Korea jersey over a, another club. Okay, so you want to get like a the... sunny or Real Madrid sunny? No, I would not. Oh, okay. fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, like I'm, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm like too much of a like. I can be a football neutral on some things if I'm like trying, but I don't think I could walk away or around like wearing like another club's kit. I, I just don't know if I could really. Do yeah, <laughs> no. I don't know. <laughs> I have to wear a, I have to wear Chelsea jerseys on my like for my yeah. Sunday league, yeah. and I like feel dirty the entire time. I like don't like it at all. Fake fan. People will be like, "Oh, cool kit." I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know. It kind of sucks." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. Those are the golden questions. Thank you for telling us your. Yeah. Sorry, yes. that was like such a long-winded no, answer. No, no, no. It's good. But... It's good. Yeah. Good. To know you. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Well, everybody, thank you for watching the show. Season three, episode twelve, going strong. World Cup's coming up soon. I cannot. Ooh, it's gonna be amazing. But everybody, thank you for watching the show. Watching on YouTube and on Spotify. Veronica, thank you for joining. Always lovely to have you, and I cannot wait to play with you tomorrow. We're gonna win. Ah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. We do what we do. And Peter, thank you for joining. I know you probably talked at least a couple words in this, but hey, having an Arsenal fan is always a great thing, especially right now that you're happier. Excuse me, yeah, good to be here again. 
Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody, thank you for watching the show. And, you know, like, subscribe, and sharing, because without sharing it, how else are you going to know that uh, to this, this lovely song? Just, oh, God bless you. God bless you, Rodney, for doing this. This is a beautiful thing. And everybody, thank you for watching the show. And as we say, in three, two, one. 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 Love. Love. Football. Football. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> And bye. Bye. Eh, I did it at the drop. Okay. okay uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Bye.